Hi, and welcome to this video, which is part of the Transition Year Higher Level Maths Algebra Revision Module. This revision module has been put together to help you to revise all algebra topics that you would have covered at Junior Start Higher Level and to help you with moving into the Leaving Start Higher Level course. Today's video, we are going to look at manipulation of formula. This is when we rearrange a given equation or formula. So before we begin, just to be familiar with the way these questions are asked, the first way that you could be asked to do this is to write, find or express x in terms of y. Another way that this could be asked is to make x the subject of the formula or equation. Both of these ways of asking the question are asking for the exact same thing and that is getting you to write x equals and then whatever on the right hand side will contain the other variable or variables. So let's start with the first example. So the first one we've been asked is express x in terms of the other variables. Now, in this example, we only have y as another variable, but that's absolutely fine. So the goal is to get x on its own. Now, in this case, that's not too difficult. Um, straight away, though, we should see that this piece here is stopping the x being on its own. So let's get rid of this first. OK, so we're going to move that across the equals. So when we bring a minus 2y across the equals, we're going to get a plus 2y. Okay, and then here, it's important to note that when we have a 3x, what we're dealing with is 3 multiplied by x. So in order to get rid of that 3, we need to divide both sides by 3. Okay, so let's divide this side by 3 and this side by 3. These effectively cancel. So on this side, I'm just left with an x, and I'm left with 4 plus 2y over 3. Now, there's no need to clean that up further. That's absolutely fine. We have expressed x and in terms of the other variables. So again, we're just getting the x on its own. So let's look at another example. This example is going to be slightly more difficult because the fact that we want to find t in terms of x, so it's going to be t equals, so we want to get t on its own, and if you can see, we actually have a t here above the line and 3t here below the line. So because that t appears more than once, it makes our job a little bit more difficult, but still doable. Okay, so like in um, any equation that we have with fractions, we're going to aim to get rid of the fraction. So let's rewrite my formula here first in my equation. And we should be all familiar with how to get rid of fractions. So the method to get rid of fractions is we multiply both sides by what's at the bottom of the fraction. And on this side here, I'm going to multiply by 3t plus 1. So here they cancel. So what I'm left with is 3t plus 1 by x equals t plus 4. So I need to multiply out my bracket now. So I get 3tx plus x equals t plus 4. Now remember, I'm trying to find t, and I'm just going to highlight here so we can remember. I'm trying to find t in terms of x. So I have a t here. And I have a t here. So what I want to do is I want to bring them at least to the same side. So <clears throat> let's have a 3tx here. I'm going to bring that t across the equals. Since that's a plus t, it'll become a minus t. And that equals 4. And let's bring this x back across this side. So it was a plus x, so it's going to be a minus x. Okay, so now we have to use a factorization. We're going to use highest common factor because if we take a look here, 3tx minus t, what's common? And that should be a t. And that leaves me with 3x minus 1. Now be careful, we've taken out a t from minus t and we're left with minus 1. The double check is t by minus 1 will give me minus t. And that equals 4 minus x. So, like in the previous question, I'm just going to rewrite this up here so we have a bit more space. 
we now have the t multiplied by something. In order to get rid of that, I'm going to divide both sides by 3x minus 1, which on the left-hand side, that will cancel, leaving us with t equals 4 minus x all over 3x minus 1. So I suppose what's really important here is to remember this step here which is the factorization. So factorization. It's so important that you remember to do that step when it appears more than once in the initial equation or the initial formula. Other than that, it's exactly the same. Okay, let's move on to another example. So in this case, we want to express C. So I'm just going to highlight that here, just so we remember what we're looking for. So we want to get C in terms of the other variables. So there's a good few other variables here. We have A, we have B, and we have D. So we want to get C on its own. Now straight away, we can see that there's a square root. So that's the first thing we're going to have to deal with. And how we're going to deal with that we're going to have to square both sides of the equation because remember the square and the square root they're the opposites of each other so if I want to get rid of a square root in order to do that I will square it so I'm left with d squared equals a minus b over ac because what actually happens effectively is the square root and that square they cancel with each other so now I have my C here underneath the line. So to get rid of my fractions, I multiply both sides by what's on the bottom of the fraction. We have some cancellation here. So I'm left with AC by D squared equals A minus B. So this is AC D squared equals A minus B. I just want this C. Remember, these letters written together, they're actually multiplied. So I can divide both sides by AD squared. And here, these cancel. And what I'm left with is C equals A minus B over AD squared. So I've now expressed C in terms of my other variables. So example four, so this is using something that's familiar to us, or at least should be familiar to us, and it's the volume and the surface area of a cylinder. So both of these formula are given in your log tables, um, but this particular question, it's not asking you to use them, it's asking you to rearrange them. So the volume of a cylinder is given by V is equal to pi r squared h. Find the radius, or in terms of V and h. So we're trying to get r on its own. So let's start with what we have. So V is equal to pi r squared h. So straight away we can see that there's an r squared and it's being multiplied by a pi and a h. So let's divide both sides by pi and h. Okay, so the pi's cancel, h cancel. So we're left with V over pi h equals r squared. Now, in the previous example, we had a square root, which we got rid of using a square. This time, we're going to actually put a square root on both sides. Okay, so we'll put a square root on both sides because the square root of r squared will just leave me r. So I'm left with the square root of v over pi h is equal to r. And that's our answer. So remember that every operation in maths they come with a partner they come in pairs so adding and subtraction one because is the opposite of the other multiplying and dividing one is the opposite of each other and we have squaring and square roots okay so let's look at the next part of this question then so they've told us that the surface area is given as a equals 2 pi r h find the radius in terms of a and h so let's start with what we've been given. 
2 pi r h. We want to get that r on its own, so we can divide both sides by 2 pi h. 2 pi h. So those 2's cancel, pi's cancel, and h's cancel. So a over 2 pi h is equal to r. Okay, so that was quite straightforward. So now that they want us, they want to show, sorry, so now we're looking at part C and show that A squared is equal to 4 pi h v. Okay, so the hence here is important. It means using our previous parts. So if you look here, we have effectively at the first step got or sign it or equals the square root of v over pi h here we have or equals a over 2 pi h so although we have two different expressions for or or two different equations of or they are equal so let's those equal to each other basically what we're going to do is we're going to say or is equal to or we're going to have the square root of v over pi h is equal to a over 2 pi h. Now, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that square root so we can square both sides. So square and the square root cancel, leaving us with just v over pi h is equal to. And in order to square a fraction, we square the top. And we square the bottom, so we have 4 pi squared h squared. Okay, so I'm trying to get a on its own. So let's try to get rid of the fraction, and in particular this fraction here. So we'll multiply both sides by 4 pi squared h squared. We'll do the same on this square, this side here, 4 pi squared h squared. What happens then is this cancels here and you might notice here we have a pi that can cancel with one of the pi's and a h that cancels with one of the h's. So we're left then with 4 pi h by v is equal to a squared. So if we just rearrange that so it matches what we've been asked, a squared is equal to 4 pi h v. And that's exactly what we were asked.